All right, guys, glad to have y'all back. I'm Don Gonzalez with Don Gonzalez Salary. Um, just wanted to let y'all know we sent out a newsletter last week, and we start, we're going to try to start doing a thing. It's a little question and answer. If uh, you send me an email and put in the subject line YouTube Q&A, and uh, I'll try to answer those questions a little bit more. I'm getting a lot of questions on the e on email, and sometimes those are hard to answer in written form, and it's just easier for me just to do it and show you what I do and how I do it. And so I um, had a couple people send some questions in, and so Chris uh, emailed me and asked about oiling a product, a project, and one of the things I want to make sure that we're on the same page with first is that if you're trying to get this look, Chris, there's another video that I've done that's uh, dyeing and painting leather that shows you how to do the two-tone effect. I, I think I understand your question because you were trying to oil a product. How do you get that dark oil without the oil, without the leather looking saturated? And so that's, that's an issue because if you over oil leather at some point, it's hit its max and it can't absorb any more oil and so it'll kind of almost stay wet for for quite a while and look real slimy especially on a rough out it'll just look really really slimy and, and gross so um, you want to definitely be careful not to do that but if you're trying to get the real dark color the real dark chestnut type deep brown um, I would suggest first off buying that type of leather buying a chestnut almost all your leather manufacturers whether it's thoroughbred or Herman Oak stuff like that they have different colors so you can get you know your, your normal russet color or you can get the chestnut and the chestnut's really pretty now everybody's chestnut's just a little bit different uh, thoroughbreds probably got one of the darkest where when you oil it I mean you can almost get that leather uh, brownish black I mean it's really really dark and Herman Oaks chestnut's real pretty too but if you're trying if you're building a lot of products or say a lot of saddles I don't know what you're building Chris but if you're building a lot of that stuff and you want it super super rich and dark then I would suggest starting out with that type of skirting leather, a little dark, especially with the Herman Oak, because the Herman Oak is really hard to get dark until it's been in the sun. So on a lot of our saddles, if the client wants them really dark, I always tell them I'll get it as dark as I can, and then after you ride it for a month or so, you can start oiling it again, and after that sun heats that leather up, and it's something with the UV rays, it changes a little bit of that leather, and it allows it to get darker at that point, especially after its first year of cleaning. When we go back through and oil it, it's going to be really dark, and, and we can get it really dark after that. But in the shop, it's pretty difficult to get them that dark without using a chestnut-type leather. But with that being said, um, the oil that I use is just a olive oil or a pomace oil. Uh, it's you don't have to use extra virgin or anything like that. Um, it's just a just olive oil, and I buy it from the produce supply company here in town. They sell you know all kinds of produce for restaurants and stuff, but they sell the olive oil by the case. And I think this case and these gallon jugs are six to a case, and I think I spend around 85 bucks, something like that. The reason I like the olive oil is that the Neat's Foot oil that we get these days ha tends to have two, some impurities in it and stuff like I don't know what they're doing to it, but it's not near as good as it used to be years ago. Uh, Neat's Foot oil was really high quality, now it's, it's not really, really that great. And so um, it's fine for repair, for those sort of things, but for me I found that it doesn't evenly distribute. I get a lot of blotchiness. It's hard to even it out, especially if you're going with a lighter tone. If you're trying to keep that lighter look on a saddle, you'll end up having to go darker to compensate for the for the blotchiness that you've got. So we switched to olive oil probably seven, eight years ago and haven't gone back and I love it. Um, the olive oil is clean, it's thin, it goes in good. You can actually over oil accidentally and it'll lighten up a lot more than you thought um, versus the Neat's Foot Oil. So I highly recommend this, especially if you're starting out and you're having trouble with that and going too dark or something like that, then the olive oil is, is your best bet. And you can buy it at Walmart or Sam's in these same gallon jugs. Um, you're just going to pay a little bit more you know, than if you could find a restaurant supply company where you can just buy it there wholesale. And uh, the one we have here in town allows us to do that. So I do that. I'm going to show you exactly how I oil because a lot of people, when they go to oil them the first time, they, they'll either put too much on right away just trying to get it dark and then you end up with those splotchy saturated areas and so you want to try to avoid that so I do recommend starting with it even my first coat is always a little heavier than all the rest of them but I start out you know pretty good but but do it evenly work it in and then allow that to dry and float out and then then you'll be able to see your highlights and where you're where you don't have enough oil or where, maybe where you have too much if you have too much there's not really a whole lot you can do except to 
level out or bring up the highlights to match the, the darkest. That's why you want to start out a little bit lighter. Um, but I'll walk you through that and kind of what I do and, and, and how I do that. Now, I'm going to be only just a piece of skirting leather, so it's nice and thick. It's 13 ounce. Um, those kind, uh, that leather, it's going to obviously it's thicker, so it's going to absorb a lot more oil. So you may use more oil on that than you would say on a wallet. And if you're making a wallet and you want it that dark, I would suggest probably dyeing, using dyes to get the darkness that you're looking for because on that thin leather you can saturate that stuff really really quickly and if your tulin may have looked real crisp and clean then you pump all that oil into it trying to get it dark and it'll start looking kind of spongy and, and kind of swollen from the oil so I always recommend on the lighter stuff belts and wallets and things like that if you're gonna go dark you know again if you want this color here this base color brown use dye just you know you can put oil on first and then dye and in that video I talk about that the, the oil will help that dye run in there more evenly I've even heard of some guys that mix their oil with dye they mix the two together and make kind of an oil dye mix that they can wipe on and it goes in evenly I have not done that um, very rarely have I ever used a dye and oil mix maybe on a repair to try to antique something so it didn't look new but um, but you can sure try that but anytime like I said First off, if you're going to go, if you want to go super dark, go ahead and get the chestnut leather. It'll save you a lot of time, it'll save you a lot of money in oil, and your stuff won't look real saturated. Um, saturating that leather, once you get pat, once you get to that point, it's really, really hard to get away from that. Uh, you can't really back it out, you can't dry it out other than just time. It's going to take a lot of time. One thing is, you won't ever dry rot. It'll be in good shape for, for quite some time because you've got a lot of oil in it. But it can also damage your stitches, and, and then, like I said, we can talk about the tooling, it can do that as well. well look, when you're doing the belts, when you're oiling your belts and stuff in preparation for antiquing, you, I normally don't like to go as dark as you're talking about. If you're worried about saturation, you're obviously going super dark. And if you're going that dark, I honestly wouldn't waste the time antiquing it most of the time because you're already so dark, you're not going to see those highlights that the antique is supposed to create. So, um, but when you're oiling your belts and stuff like that, don't oil the backside. Um, on when I show you here in the in the oil room, that skirting leather, we're going to oil the backside because it's exposed, and so we want them to look finished. And if you don't oil them, it'll just look kind of unfinished or even stained from oil in other places so I go and oil both sides but if you're lining something or you're doing a holster um, that sort of thing then I don't even worry about oil in the back because if you if you tool a belt like I do you've got paper uh, tape to tape or paper glued on the back or something to keep it from stretching so you don't want to put oil on that anyway so but it'll be fine you're just oiling from top down so you're you know you'll have to maybe add a little bit more to get it to the darkness you want as that oil goes through into the leather okay so here's that oil again just an olive oil you don't have to use the uh, extra virgin olive oil just regular regular olive oil I usually pour it into a uh, just a type of plastic bin there so it's easily accessible and then I just use scrap pieces of sheepskin this is a little piece of scrap leather that we have here the uh, thing the biggest thing with oiling leather is just I always get some on my on my uh, sheepskin and then kind of give it just a quick wipe across my grate. Now I use this grate. It's got a piece of metal in there that's just kind of bowed and it's leaned this direction so it just kind of catches any overflow and goes down to a little catch bucket with a funnel just to kind of catch and conserve any scrap. Um, as you can see there's a lot of debris in here and, and junk but that's just kind of what, what happens after years of use. You get a lot of trash. But anyhow here's our scrap piece of leather got some oil on my deal and what I usually do is kind of circles and then work it in and it kind of depends on what you're going for if you're gonna if you know you're gonna want it darker like your question Chris was how do you get it dark without oversaturating I would still start out this way usually my first coat uh, especially with Herman Oak and with olive oil I go pretty dark uh, or pretty heavy that first coat um, and just not super heavy but put you a little bit on you don't want it pooling on top of the leather you you want it to absorb as you're rubbing it in it's absorbing um, now on your thicker leathers like this is a piece of saddle skirting um, those kind of leathers if it's a fender and that sort of thing I'll go ahead and oil the back side as well um, that way because if not you, your back is going to have the stains from your hands or whatever 
um, or your grate or whatever you're oiling on. So I go ahead and give that a light little wipe down. Um, that way it's got oil coming in the leather from both sides. Um, the biggest thing to watch out for, even on thicker leathers, is not to drag your, your dauber across or your sheepskin across like this. That's a cut edge. So that's basically going to absorb here, here, and underneath. So you're going to get a darker spot along this edge if you do that way because you're basically scraping the oil off and adding a, a lot extra there to the edge. So you always want to kind of start in the middle, work your way out towards the edges, try not to scrape too much off the edge, um, and then go from there. Now I oil and finish all my work before I do my edges. So theoretically, um, you know, you can come back in and clean up. You're going to edge off if you get a little darker tone. But if you'll do one coat about like that, like I said, just one even, nice, full coat, this is going to lighten up a lot over the next hour, two hours. And I'll usually let a, uh, you know, a fender or saddle parts, those sort of things, I'll let them set for sometimes a day just to let that oil really float out. And as you can see in here, it's already starting to dry and lighten up into certain areas. It's going to look a little blotchy right at first and a little uneven. Don't worry about that because as you come back, once we come back later, we'll see the different tones. You can come back in and if you've got a light spot over here, you can add a little oil there, add a little oil there. Uh, Freddie tends to go back through when he oils something is he'll put some pretty good oil on all the light spots. And, and by the time he's gone down, say, a fender or skirt or the saddle, he doesn't have very much oil left, and he's only putting it in those light spots, just a little bit on each light spot, and then he's kind of scraping off and then just blending. So he's just blending with that oil, and he can get the, the most even oiling jobs that I've seen. I mean, he just gets it really nice and even, whether it's light, medium, or dark oil. Um, now to answer your question, Chris, if you're going super dark, you um, if you're trying to get as dark as you can, um, then just keep going with those smaller coats. The reason I say going with the smaller coats is because you can kind of sense when it's fixing to get oversaturated, when it's fixing to just it's always going to look wet and it's going to be slimy, um, and that that will happen. So you can kind of sense with those smaller staggered. Uh, coats you can kind of start to tell when that's about to happen and then just back off if you need to go still darker you know that another coach is just going to probably make it too saturated then you might consider using some dye but um, but that's about all I do right there is just you know like I said just working in evenly and you can keep going over this and going over this with very light coats I don't have very much oil in this I mean that's too much so I take and I scrape that but I'm catching my excess down there in my funnel and my little bucket so it's kind of a reserve so I'm not wasting it that's the reason I like this great um, it's just a two by four square with a piece of sheet metal in it that's that's bent like a canoe kind of and then you just put this grating over the top of it gives some support for your product and then allows you allows any runoff oil to drip through and run down and collect so keep that in mind like I said and use use some nice big sheepskin pads I usually kind of trim them a little bit so I don't have just a ton of fuzzy sticking out of there but try that and see what you think so that's our video uh, Chris I hope that answered your question um, if it didn't send me an email back and that you know try to help you clarify some of that um, it should should be fairly easy like I said it, it oil is kind of one of the deals where you can really screw up really fast if you're if you kind of get too too gung-ho in it and, and add too much because remember with oil you can always you can always add more but you can't take it out so once you put it in there it's there so just small steps just like anything else you know small coats you know multiple small coats versus one huge coat um, and that way you can kind of control your process but I appreciate the question um, if you guys have any more questions send them to me remember put uh, YouTube Q&A in the subject line and I'll try to address those on a little video if, uh, if I can and get those out we're really enjoying this but if you want to know any more about us or, or see more of our stuff you can visit us at dgsaddlery.com it's got all our contact information and links and all that kind of stuff and be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you'll get the latest update of the newest video that comes out i really want to turn that air conditioner on it's hot in here <laughs>